When uh, installing the GM LS2 ignition coil and the replacement ignitions, we ran into an issue where on some of the engines, the, uh, uh, ign the engine was backfiring through the carburetor. Now, I do not have a, a Miller welder or a overhead valve engine to do any of the testing of the troubleshooting. So I was very handicapped on what I could do and it, it took me a long time. But a, a newfound inter internet friend, uh, Vance Atkinson down in Texas, had a Miller welder with an ignition that didn't work and uh, he was anxious to get it going again. Uh, Vance has also got 40 years experience with oil field engines and all sizes from line trimmers to 1,000 horsepower engines and he's extremely capable and willing to do a lot of the legwork that I'm presenting here. Uh, in order to communicate we need to define some terms and I'll use the term wasted spark here several times and it uh, could be that most of the guys out there wouldn't, uh, wouldn't know what it is because they never heard of it before. So uh, on a four-stroke engine, like this old lawnmower engine for illustration, uh, we have four strokes. We have the, uh, uh, a compression stroke. The piston comes up on compression. Both valves are closed. We get a spark and we get a power stroke. When we get down towards the bottom of the power stroke, the exhaust valve starts to open. We continue on, the piston comes up on the exhaust stroke and the exhaust valve uh, begins to close and the intake valve begins to open. On the next stroke, uh, we have the intake stroke and we're back to where we started from. Uh, uh, for the compression stroke. Now on the exhaust stroke it's near the top and the exhaust valve is closing. We get to the top and the intake valve opens. Well when this piston comes up to the top at the end of the exhaust stroke the trigger pin on the flywheel goes past the, uh, the, the trigger coil on the and we get a spark. It's a second spark. It's got doesn't have any use or any function. It usually fires into uh, a bunch of uh, spent fuel and air mixture. On the overhead valve engine, the exhaust valve is somewhere in the, the area of the piston top and the intake valve is somewhere in this, in this area and you've got the spark plug somewhere up on this area. So you've got the spark plug very close to the intake valve. Also, we have the intake valve, as Vance has measured it, is opening well before, well before the piston comes up to the top. So, um, when the, the wasted spark is firing, it's in very close proximity to the opening of the intake valve, and it, it lights off the gas and uh, it propagates out through the carburetor. The GM LS2 ignition coil has a feature of putting out a whole burst of sparks uh, over a short period of time rather than just a single spark at, at a well-defined uh, instant of time. So this has to increase the probability of the wasted spark lighting off the fuel air mix coming off the open intake valve. The uh, LS2 also has a feature where it uses the incoming pulse from the computer, uses the width of that pulse to make timing adjustments, ignition timing adjustments. So um, the, the ignition timing could be changed, which could be another uh, grassroots cause of lighting off of the, uh, the wasted spark, lighting off the, uh, the fuel air mix at the uh, open intake valve. I might mention here that uh, other guys use a, a different modern ignition coil uh, that's uh, computer controlled and uh, they too should uh, be aware of the wasted spark issues uh, when they, they use those other 
uh, coils intended for uh, being triggered by the computer pulse. Now, if we're using the LS2 ignition coil, there are a few things that we can do to uh, minimize the uh, the impact uh, of the on the for the wasted spark the uh, the engine here. The uh, the first thing we can do is when you go to crank the engine, close the choke valve all the way before you start cranking. This will slow down the airflow coming out through the intake valve uh, at that time. Another thing you can do is uh, use high test gasoline. Vance noted that that seems to improve uh, the condition. Another thing you could do is make sure you have a very good battery so you can crank the engine up to a high RPM as quickly as possible to not have a lot of time for the fuel air mix to find its way to the spark plug. Okay, one of the questions that I asked myself was why are we having so much trouble with the wasted spark and the, the original engine with the, uh, the SSI, the 610906, had no problems at all with the, with the wasted spark. I think the answer to that is that the original ignition, being a capacitance discharge, put out one spark, very well defined, very narrow, over a very short period of time, a lot of energy, even looked blue, and that was able to dodge the wasted spark problem with the uh, opening intake valve. So uh, that set me on a train of thought where maybe we should look at repairing some of the 610906s to, uh, to see if we could correct the problem because uh, there's a limited number of options here. Uh, I think that about half of the 906s that have failed could be repaired and I've put forth a major effort and two different videos to uh, to just address the repair of the 906s. So I would refer you to them. Another very vi viable alternative is the, uh, the old to mid 1980s Chrysler control module. We've been you putting putting these on Tecumseh engines for 20 years. Uh, when I stopped counting the serial numbers on them. It was, we were up around 1,300 of them. So there's probably more than that out there on engines. Very reliable, very viable. Never had a problem whatsoever with overhead valve engines. So it was a little bit slow recognizing that uh, here we have a, a very good solution right in front of us. The control modules are readily available and at a reasonable price. Uh, the internal design is, is uh, using modern semiconductors, which is a good thing. Uh, the ignition coil, however, these have gotten very expensive. Last time I went to, to look at the buy one, it was like $60 each. Uh, I'm going to try to go ahead and make a batch of the uh, uh, trigger coils so that if people need this type of ignition, they can have a trigger coil available. Uh, the reason I think that this configuration works well on the overhead valve engines is that we have a, a single spark that's uh, triggered by the trigger pin and it's much like the, the solid state ignition. For more information about the, uh, the mid-80s Chrysler control module replacement ignition, you can go to my website, so www.enginesandmagnets.com. Dot com.